This lesson then will be a brief consolidation on your understanding of the Brezhnev Doctrine and the re-establishment of control uh, by the Soviet Union in Czechoslovakia in 1968. So how much can you remember about the Prague Spring, the second attempt by an Eastern European country to rebel against the authority of the Soviet Union? Firstly, who had been the Czech leader since 1957? That was Antonin Novotny. Secondly, who replaced Novotny as leader of Czechoslovakia during the 1960s when many countries were experiencing changes in leadership? It was Alexander Dubček. Who then became president of Czechoslovakia? It was General Ludwig Svoboda. What is the capital of Czechoslovakia? Prague. What did the Czechs call also the reforms that became known as the Prague Spring? Socialism with a human face. What were the newspapers given under the Prague Spring reforms? More freedom, lack of censorship. How long was the programme for political change introduced by the Prague Spring? It was planned to take 10 years to fully introduce these reforms. What happened to the powers of the secret police under the Prague Spring reforms? They had less power. What happened to trade and contact with the West under the Prague Spring reforms? Travel restrictions were removed and fresh contact with the West was allowed. What was the name of the author of the manifesto called The 2000 Words? Ludwig Vakulik. What did he call for? Even greater and more extreme reform. Who did Brezhnev come under pressure from to stop the reforms in Czechoslovakia? all the other Eastern European countries, but in particular the East German and the East German leaders were worried that the reforms in Czechoslovakia would encourage their own people to protest. What year was the Prague Spring? That was 1968. So then, Brezhnev, the man and his doctrine. In August 1968, Leonid Brezhnev replaced Khrushchev as the Soviet leader. Khrushchev was retired due to his perceived failures in Cuba and his failure to reform the Soviet economy at home. Brezhnev immediately then introduced what became known as the Brezhnev Doctrine. Now we've also already mentioned doctrines of policies and the most famous doctrine of all was Truman's Doctrine to contain communism in 1947. The Brezhnev Doctrine, if you read this below, is the Truman Doctrine in reverse. He is not going to allow the expansion of capitalism and democracy. When forces that are hostile to socialism, communism, try to turn the development of some socialist or communist countries towards capitalism, it becomes not only a problem of the country concerned, but a common problem and concern of all socialist, communist countries. The Prague Spring and events in Czechoslovakia were portrayed as a very serious threat to the Soviet Union. So you need to make sure that you have a definition of the Brezhnev Doctrine written down. And you need to explain what impact the Brezhnev Doctrine would have on the 1968 Prague Spring. What was the Brezhnev Doctrine then? According to the Brezhnev Doctrine, the USSR had the right to invade any country in Eastern Europe whose actions threatened the whole of the Eastern Bloc. Brezhnev argued that he had no choice but to invade Czechoslovakia because the actions taken by Dubček threatened the security of the Warsaw Pact and the Soviet control of Eastern Europe. Brezhnev was making it clear that all members of the country, countries had to remain part of the Warsaw Pact. The fear that Czechoslovakia might leave the Warsaw Pact, rather like Hungary in 1956, triggers the invasion. Brezhnev also made it clear that if a capitalist country threatened a communist country, then other communist countries could and would intervene. 
On the next slide, you will see the events that led to the re-establishment of Soviet control over Czechoslovakia in the wrong chronological order. I would like you to be able to sequence them correctly. So there is the process broken down into five stages. The correct sequence is as follows, and if you are unclear, you will need to have a copy of this written down. On the 21st of August 1968, Soviet troops entered Czechoslovakia, backed by forces from Bulgaria, East Germany, Hungary and Poland, so other Warsaw Pact countries. As the Soviet troops entered the Czech capital, Prague, petrol bombs were thrown at the Soviet tanks. As well as attacking Soviet troops with petrol bombs, buildings were set fire and protesters organised in Wenceslas Square, the centre of Prague. Czech students even climbed onto Soviet tanks and tried to argue with the Soviet soldiers. But critically, they had learnt from the Hungarian rebellion uh, 12 years earlier, not to fight. As the protest started in Wenceslas Square, anti-Soviet radio broadcasters moved from one place to another to avoid detection. There was, however, no armed resistance from the Czech army to the Soviet invasion. Soviet control of Czechoslovakia was re-established and Dubček and the other leaders were arrested and taken to Moscow. Hardline Soviet-friendly leaders replaced the reformist leaders of Czechoslovakia and put to an end the Prague Spring. Once again, the attempt to reform communism had failed. Brezhnev was not brave enough to attempt it himself, and when he allowed the Czechs to attempt to reform, it went too far, too fast, and he had to intervene. Jan Palach, a student, set himself aflame. He self-immolated himself in protest against the Soviet invasion. So the most important to the least important factors in the Prague Spring are provided here. You need to identify the consequences of the Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia and rewrite the Diamond Nine in order of importance according to your opinion. What, why wasn't the West more critical of the Soviet Union invasion? And why was China critical and what impact did this have? You can then refer to the PowerPoint for the extension questions and assessments.